Guys, so today I'm doing a how-to vlog. This is for vlogging or for if you're doing urban exploring or photography or anything like that. So I've come out here into the outdoors because probably 95% of my videos are shot outside. It's actually probably like 99% of my videos, unless it's in a building. But uh, <clears throat> I figured I'd come out here to show some real world applications for all my equipment. So first we're gonna go over everything I do for the actual production all the equipment that I do to make every single video and then after we're gonna go over uh, like what I do like all the programs I have if you want to actually know that since there's been so many requests for this I figured why not give you guys a little taste as to what I do every single day what I carry around and uh, how you can do the same so the first thing that you need to know is that my setup is kind of different from everyone else's um, the whole exploring crew we kind of do things a little differently than every other vlogger we uh, we like to be bold and we like to be kind of out there. And as you'll see from my camera gear, that this isn't for the timid. So I'll first start off by showing you this camera right here. It's called the G7X. And it's a nice little point and shoot. You can see yourself, which is really nice when you're vlogging. You can see yourself in the little screen and everything. But uh, this is the camera I took to Thailand. and. I dropped it a couple times, so it's not very reliable anymore. It kind of just turns off occasionally. So right now it's a backup camera. Uh, my main camera, which is what I'm shooting on right now, which I'll switch to, is the Canon 5D Mark III. 5D sits on this big tripod. Uh, it's what I use to get all the those walking shots you see me do all the time where I set the tripod down, press record, and then walk away. I do that a lot, you'll see. But that's because I have this tripod, I just set it up. And the reason I love this tripod is because of how big, how tall it can get. It can be like six feet, taller than myself. And then you can just fold it up real quick. That's how quick I fold it up. And then it turns into a selfie stick. And this is actually what I carry around all day. So, you know, you can't be, literally everyone who I see walking on the street as I'm filming will stop and stare at me or they will ask me what it is. So when that happens, you have to be ready to hand them a little business card to show them your YouTube channel. But this is definitely a different way to vlog than most people. M most people are using those little cameras. We're walking around with these things in the city all day. That's why we get stopped so much. And uh, <laughs> so you can't be timid, you have to be a little bold. So we walk around like this all day. Um, we take the camera, we hold it out as a selfie stick. And this is pretty much how I like it. I know other YouTubers, such as Casey, use the Gorilla Pod and stuff, but I think it's pretty. Uh, those things are so like hard to mold and stuff. And like, I'm actually using a small version right now, but they're so hard to mold, and you can't actually get them to be the shot you want. You can't even be get like get them to be this tall. Like I could put it on a tripod, and it's still about the same size as that Gorilla Pod, and it's nice because it's a nice, firm, steady tripod you can hold on to. Now the one thing about this camera, the Canon 5D doesn't have a flip out screen, and it does not have autofocus. So I got this camera a couple years ago, and it's pretty much just, it's an amazing camera, but for vlogging, I don't recommend it. It's kind of the case where you have to use what you have, and that's what I'm doing. For this camera, I have to actually autofocus, um, for this camera, I have to actually manually focus it on the lens here to the distance, which is two feet away. I measured it in front of a mirror. Two feet away is how far this is for it to be in focus. So every time I want to talk to the camera, I have to actually look at the lens, put it on two feet, and do that. So I do not recommend it. That's why I want to upgrade to a camera that probably like the uh, Sony a7S II, which has autofocus. Um, other than that, if you're starting out, I would recommend something like the Canon 70D or the Canon 80D, which has a flip out screen and has the most amazing autofocus. Or just a flip out screen where you can actually see yourself. Because this, I have no idea. The only thing I had to do was stand in front of a mirror and hope that I could get that focus right. And since then, it seems to be doing well, but 
Yeah. <laughs> Could be better. <laughs> the lens I'm using is a Tokina 17 to 35. I pretty much only use this lens. I have a couple other lenses, but this is about the only lens that I use. The reason is because I love the wide angle. The 17 to 55 is the perfect angle. At 17 is what I mostly use it at. It's nice and wide, you can get the whole shot. And for the, the amazing scenery shots that we get all the time, it's best for that. You show the whole view and you really get the best picture quality with the wide angle. The mic that I'm using here is called a Rode VideoMic Pro. It's the pro version. Um, I love it because this one has the newer, better shock mount. So you can like flick it around and it doesn't actually like, it doesn't hit basically. It doesn't hit the, the whatever it's called, the top of the camera. So it has an amazing shock mount and it actually doesn't come with this little furry thing. I added this, so it's an extra wind mic. It's called a dead mount, or no, a dead cat. It's a dead cat that you put on top of it and adds for the extra wind protection against, uh, you know, when you're on a boat, and there's so much wind blaring at this thing. You can actually still hear me with this thing as you've noticed in probably some of my recent videos. It'll sound windy, but it's very muffled, which I love. So I carry this around all day. Most frequent question I get every day is, what's that on top of your camera? Because they know it's some kind of mic, but most people don't know why there's this furry thing. And people love to laugh at that, which is funny. I get a lot of comments about that. Imagine me walking around like this all day, especially in crowded places, like in Disney World when we were there, uh, Disneyland actually a couple, a couple months ago now. So it's a pretty nice little camera, especially if, if you have one of these little Gorilla Pods. I would definitely start off with a camera like this if you can. It's best to have a screen up here to look at yourself or just autofocus. So I don't recommend the camera I have. You can tell if, you're, if you've got the patience to master the Canon 5D, it's definitely an amazing camera. The next thing on my list are the two other lenses that I have but don't use too frequently. And that is the Tamron 24 to 70 lens, which will get you those kind of closer up zoom shots. So if you think right now my lens is 17 millimeter, the millimeter is how far it zooms out. So this one is a 70, so it can zoom out a bit farther than that does. And the only thing is, it's an expensive lens, and I haven't used it like at all since I got this new 17 millimeter lens. I pretty much primarily only use that 17 to 35. The other lens I do have though, I'll use occasionally, is a 50 millimeter lens, which goes down to a low f-stop means, which means it has a nice bokeh, which is, you know, how blurry the background is. It can make things look very nice. It's very good for talking shots or close-up shots. So this is the Tokina 17 to 35 at 17 millimeters, all the way zoomed out, and this is what I mostly use it at. It can go into 35, which is pretty great if I need a little bit closer up. So this is the 24 to 70. You can see it's a little more zoomed in, and this is at 24. This is at 70. So this is the lens I have that zooms in the most, and it, it's good for those long shots. This is a 50 millimeter lens. It does not zoom in at all, but it can go very close up for those nice artsy shots where everything is out of focus, and it just looks beautiful. I use this very rarely, but I want to use it more just because of how, how gorgeous it looks. I mean, you can zoom in and out of this tree right here and have multiple things in focus. Another camera that I have that I haven't used too frequently yet because for some reason it doesn't work with Mac computers, it's Samsung, so they didn't set it up with Mac computers for some reason, because I guess they hate Apple. But um, this is the Samsung 360 camera that I don't think is even out yet. Uh, at the time I'm filming this, I don't think it's even released to the public, but I got it at VidCon. I have it on a little self, it's on a little selfie stick right now. And it's a great camera. The only thing is, importing it, since I have an Apple computer, I have to actually take the files on my Samsung phone and I have to convert them on my phone and then upload the files through my phone to the computer. It's a complete hassle, that's why I only have like one 360 video with this. And even though the, the quality says 4K, it still looks kind of like blurry and everyone, everyone also can, you know, kind of tell it doesn't look completely 4K. And so that's why I've only done a couple videos with it. But I do like this, it's definitely like a, uh, it's a camera that you use for special occasions. 
Uh, I don't have too many special occasions yet where I want to use this, but in the future I'll be using it more for sure. My last camera is the GoPro Hero 4, which I love. It's got great quality. It's a very small little camera. The only thing is the battery life on these things is not that great, so you have to buy a bunch of batteries. They're, they're these little batteries that come out. They're pretty, pretty small and handy, but they don't last very long. Now, the, I permanently keep it in this case that I have right here, which is a waterproof housing case with a mouth mount. And it has little neck straps to keep on so it doesn't fall off. But I use this the most out of any GoPro mount. It's pretty easy, it just goes in your mouth. It's the best POV shot that I have gotten so far. I have the headband one, but I like this one even better because it actually looks where you're looking. And I think it's more focused than the actual head mount. It's a lot easier to keep on as well. And so I have it permanently kept in this case and this is the only mount that I actually use for the GoPro. If I'm holding it, I'll just hold it like that too. So there's really no need to switch mounts. This is my Samsung S7 Edge, which I've been using more frequently now because it shoots at 1080, 60, also shoots 4K. And so if I'm out and I can't actually have the 5D, I'll take this camera and I'll shoot like the kayaking day. This is waterproof too. So I'll be, I'll film myself like this and I can shoot in 4K and 1080, 60. So you can shoot some great frame rates, but the thing is, the quality, while it is 1080, you can tell it's like a shot on a phone. It's a little different. The audio is different. But it's definitely like a backup camera that I love to have and I use anywhere I can't bring a camera. Such as the movie theaters or the gym or anywhere where they don't allow actual professional cameras. To infinity! <laughs> to infinity! We're falling with Infinite. style! Woo! One thing that I also use a lot for my urban exploring videos, and anytime it's really dark, is this newer LED panel. It's a light you can get on Amazon. I mean, obviously it's bright out right now, so you can't really see how bright it is. But it is very bright, it just goes on the top of your camera. And recently, since I've decided I want better audio for all my stuff, I got this little mount here, it's called a Y mount. It basically allows you to put two things on the top of your camera. So I can put this LED pack on top of my camera, as well as the microphone that's on the camera right now. So I'll have both of them up there, and it gets really heavy, but I'm carrying around a microphone and an LED pack, and I'm getting the best quality for the videos. Now, the classic drone. The drone that everyone loves the shots at the beginning, and I love the shots too. So at the beginning of my videos, I always have some kind of drone shot, and that is with the DJI Phantom 4. I love this thing so much. It's so small, so light, and none of this is a paid advertisement. This is all just my genuine thoughts on all of this camera equipment. So, I love the Phantom so much, I've had other versions of um, different drones, and this one is by far the best. It shoots the best quality video, it shoots 4K, shoots uh, slow motion at 1080, all those great shots, and it's so strong, it can take on seagulls. Oh! Jesus Christ! It can take on seagulls, it can take on the strongest winds, it can take a lot of things on, and that's why I love the Phantom 4 so much. The other thing about this thing, is that it has a great feature which is return to home where if you lose it or you lose the video signal or you just don't know where it is you, it can fly up to a set height that you set so it can fly up over buildings and then just fly straight back and straight down to you so if you completely lose it or the battery is getting low it'll just return to home no issues and that's probably one of the best features I love about this thing so it comes with it comes with a controller this nice white controller uh, it's pretty pretty decent controller. There's not much to say about it. <laughs> just a nice, easy to use controller. The thing about this drone is that it's so easy to pick up that many people can do it. As you saw my friend, he picked it up in like two seconds. And the thing I use on top is a little iPad mini. I use this as my screen for the uh, drone so I can see everything that the drone is seeing. And so I can go so far out that I can't see the drone anymore, but I can see what it's seeing on the screen. It's a little iPad mini. You do actually need to connect it to your phone carrier though. So it costs an extra $5 a month, which isn't bad. And so it's connected to the, your data plan, and but you can see everything and it's amazing for the drone. It's so much bigger than my phone screen too. You can see. Not so much bigger, but it's, it's decent size. It definitely helps me get the better shots with this, with this uh, tablet. So when you're buying drones, you have to get extra batteries and the DJI ones are really expensive. I'm pretty sure this battery was $150 for each of them. And I have three batteries. So as you can see, when you're buying accessories for cameras and drones, it starts to add up. But it's definitely necessary if you want to practice and become better. And I think it definitely has helped me a lot. In my bag, you can see where I have all my blades. 
for the drone. And you can see how the drone fits in here really nicely. Now, I'm not gonna recommend this bag just because of how big it is, and it's the only drone bag I could carry. But the thing is, I wanna get a much smaller bag for all of this equipment. Uh, because I know there are, and this bag is just very heavy and hard to lug around. So I'm, I'm sure I can find a much smaller option. So I'm not going to recommend this bag to you, but it has done me very well. The camera currently shoots at 1080-30, and that's just kind of the standard 1080-30 or 1080-24. Uh, 24 is kind of movie-like. I like to do 30. It's a little more video, YouTube style. Um, the A7S II, which is what I want to upgrade to, which is the Sony camera, it can shoot at 4K 30, which is greater, you know, a lot more crisp, a lot more, more detail, but can also shoot at 1080, 120 frames, which basically means the more frames, the more you can slow it down. So at 120 frames, you can do the super slow motion, which just looks butter smooth, and it just looks great. So that's what I'm trying to upgrade to next. But this camera right now, it has dropped greatly in price. So if you're looking for this kind of quality, you should definitely check out the Canon 5D Mark III. You can start to see why my style of vlogging with this heavy backpack might not be ideal if you're gonna be carrying all this stuff around every single day. And that's where it starts to become an issue where you have so much equipment and you just wanna get the best videos, but it's taking up so much space so much room and it's a lot of stuff to carry. Um, so it's definitely a different style of vlogging. If you like this style of vlogging, then you should maybe look into what I'm doing, but you don't have to do this. There's tons and tons of vloggers that just carry around the simple point and shoot or even just use their phone. I know a lot of great vloggers who just use their phone and that's fine too. Okay, so lastly, I use this MacBook Pro Retina to edit all of my videos. Every single video I edit from the, the past, four years has been on this computer. 16 gigs of RAM, 2.6 uh, gigahertz, it's a MacBook Pro Retina from 2012, and it's holding strong. The three main programs that I use for all my videos and photos are Lightroom, which I use to edit all my pictures, it's Adobe Lightroom CC, and then I use Adobe Photoshop, mostly just for resizing my pictures, uh, because the pictures that I take are way too big for thumbnails, so I pretty much only use Photoshop just to resize I barely use Photoshop, mostly just for thumbnails. And then I use Adobe Premiere Pro CC for all my editing. So all of you are wondering, I do use Adobe. Most, a lot of other people, it's either Final Cut uh, Pro X or Adobe Premiere Pro. I prefer Adobe Premiere Pro just because it gives me a little bit more versatility, but Final Cut X is used by a lot of people as well. Uh, I tried learning that program, and after learning this program, it just seems so confusing. So that's why I just stick with this one. Uh, I like this one a lot, actually. And it's pretty great. But it does take a little bit of a learning curve to, to learn how to do this one. That's why I think a lot of people start with Final Cut uh, Pro X, because I think it has an easier startup. You know, you're able to learn it a little quicker. And I just wanted to give you a quick little tip. Uh, when editing, what I do is because I shoot my drone footage in 4K, and then I shoot my regular footage in 10, uh, 1080p, there's a difference in quality, and a lot of times my computer it can't really handle the 4K of the drone. So I lower the, uh, quali the quality of the video from like full quality to like a fourth of the quality, and then I just edit the whole thing like that, and it's much smoother. And then at the end when I export it, I look at it and I'm like, whoa, did I just edit that? It looks so much better. And it's kind of a nice surprise once I'm done editing, I just get to see a much nicer quality video. And yeah, I do use a LUT, which is just kind of like a preset of colors. Uh, it's just a color I made, really. I just went through messing with the colors, and I just kind of made it bluer. And so sometimes I'll use that for a LUT on some videos if I feel like it. If it feels like it needs a cool blue tone. But that's pretty much it. That's, uh, that's vlogging. That's, you know, your production and your post-production. And between that, that's what I do every single day. 365 even though it hasn't been 365 days yet. But we're getting there. So hopefully you guys have uh, learned something from this. Uh, it's definitely a different method. You don't have to do what I do, but it's it's what I do. And uh, I'll have all the links down below, and thanks for watching. I can't even tell you how many times I've walked to this park lately. It's starting to get ridiculous.